Richard Muller last updated 2137 the 7th of June 2018 Sky Sport The Crusaders celebrated Wyatt Crockett's 200th Super Rugby game with a win over the Highlanders. Alden Williams, Stuff Crusaders lock Scott Barrett, left, and Kieran Red celebrate Barrett's try just before halftime in the match against the Highlanders. Alden Williams, Stuff Crusaders center Jack Goodhue bursts upfield at Wyatt Crockett Stadium. Rugby The Crusaders will remain in Christchurch as long as they stay alive in the Super Rugby playoffs. The Crusaders' 45-22 win over the Highlanders at Wyatt Crockett Stadium in Christchurch on Friday night means they are now locked in at the top of the competition log, and with a round to play they cannot be overtaken. That rumbling noise you can hear coming out of the Garden City is confirmation that the defending champions have hotted up their engines, and good luck to you if you get trapped under their tracks. Yes, a fair bit has to happen before the finalists will be confirmed, but on this performance the ruthless Crusaders, who have now won 11 straight, must be ranked a very short odds to secure a spot. They scored five tries, they could have had a couple more if their execution had been better, in first 5 8 Richie Moonga kicked eight of his nine shots at goal to collect 20 points. All round a memorable night for the locals. And, thankfully, it meant the post-match beer will have been all the sweeter for loose head prop Wyatt Crockett. Crockett, as you would expect, got a very generous reception from the crowd when he replaced Joe Moody in the sixth minute. Taking the park so early wasn't part of the plan for Crockett, but that scheme blew to bits when Moody, having minutes earlier helped set up the opening try to George Bridge, succumbed to a knee injury. So, in his 200th Super Rugby appearance since his debut in 2006, Crockett went to work. Moody, however, will be in a darker mood. He has endured a yo-yo year, having had to earlier fight back from a major shoulder operation, a broken finger and suspension. All Blacks captain and number 8 Kieran Reid, in his comeback game after a back operation in December, would have been satisfied with his 49 minutes on the track. Reed recorded 29 meters with the ball, and made three tackles. It was more solid than spectacular, but only a miserable type would complain about his output. This was exactly what he would have wanted, and he should be good to go, once again, against the Blues next weekend. If anyone at the ground had elected to run for exit gate at halftime they must have had a cracker of an excuse. Either that or they were bonkers. Because the opening 40 minutes fair bulged with action, five tries, three scored by the Crusaders, and all will be worthwhile revisiting on the highlights reel in the days to come. The Highlanders, such a rabble when they surrendered so meekly in the first half of the game against the Chiefs in Suva the previous weekend, proved to have giant tickers. Down 12-0 in almost as minutes after the Crusaders log tries to outside backs David Havel and Bridge, the Highlanders pinged off the ropes in spectacular fashion to land a few tasty blows themselves. At feedback, tight head prop Tyrell Lomax hoovered up a sweet offload from number 8 Luke Whitelock and when playmaker Lima Sopawaga blasted upfield his skipper Ben Smith knew exactly which trail to run. Bang. Suddenly there was only one point separating these old foes. That was until Crusaders lock Scott Barrett finished off a terrific movement right on the halftime bell, with his side heading for the halftime sermons ahead 25-17. And on it went. Six minutes after the restart, both sides plucked more treats out of their goodie bags. Then the Crusaders put down the hammer. Game over. At a glance Crusaders 45, George Bridge 2, David Hevla, Scott Barrett, Richie Moonga tries, Moonga 4 con, 4 pen, Highlanders 22, Tyrell Lomax, Ben Smith, Waisaki Nahola tries, Lima Sopawaga 2 con, pen. HT, 25-17, stuff.